Okay, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to put together a video on my progress on looking into some different dual sport communication options. Um, so this kind of sprouted from and is really for some buddies that I ride with uh, in an adventure sense and in a dual sport sense uh, where we've been kind of not wholeheartedly but looking for a way to sort of stay in touch, a way to communicate on the road and on the trail. Uh, and we've, everything that we've come across in the market doesn't seem to fit very well with what it is that we want to do. Uh, so some, a lot of the limitations are that some of these systems are only good for 10 to 12 hours a day and then need charged again overnight. And the way that we dual sport is, you know, we'll camp off of, you know, bikes like my 520 EXC, you know, I have a case and rack that I put on it. But other than that, you know, we're trying to carry the bare minimum so that we can do single track and fun trails like that. And, you know, being able to, ha having to charge things overnight can be uh, a pretty big limitation, especially when you're trying to charge multiple things overnight. Um, so between that and sort of the Bluetooth nature of a lot of the devices that are on the market has been a pretty big limitation. Um, so... Like, for example, me and the wife have uh, cardo units like this. This is, I believe, a Freecom 2 Plus, and they're supposed to come prepared to each other. I would disagree that that's exactly how they are, and the pairing of them when you start the day seems to be seems to take a while. I mean, it'll take minutes sometimes to figure out how to get these two things to recognize each other and get connected up. Uh, and then even when you're out on the road, it, it, just starting like a conference call or just a inner, in an inner conference with each other, it seems like it takes multiple seconds. You know, it'll take five or six seconds sometimes, even when you're right next to each other to get these things to, to where you're talking to each other. And to me, that's just kind of unacceptable especially if you're you're riding a trail or something and you need to say hey you missed a turn or if you're an ADD idiot like me a uh, oh, squirrel but the we've been looking for kind of better solutions and what I've settled on so far is the most cost effective option has been this uh, radio I've got laying on the seat I've had these for a couple of years now uh, these are uh, Baofeng UV5R radio. Um, this does operate on the, uh, it's what's considered a ham radio. It operates from, I think, 140 something to 500 and something megahertz, which means that, and it transmits at over the, I believe it's an FCC limit of half a watt, which in the United States means that to, to operate this equipment, or at least to transmit with this equipment, uh, you do need to be licensed with an FM FRS or GMRS license, uh, but that's all your responsibility to read and understand your local and federal laws in relation to that. Um, but this video is mostly about how we how I cobbled it together for a uh, for like a dual sport type radio. So what I did here is I've got this Baofeng radio, and I got the Baofeng. Uh, helmet kit. So there's a couple of cords, you know, one that goes into the helmet for the speakers and microphones. And the the problem with it by itself is that it doesn't really offer a very good breakaway system. It's probably good enough for if you can find somewhere on your person to put the push to talk button. Um, but otherwise, and, and just to put the whole system on your person, the radio and the push to talk button. But the... The, all the connections, both of the connections that were on this thing factory were like this. This is kind of a threaded uh, threaded barrel connection. You can see this, this thread this nut loose. And that is definitely not going to break away. That's going to cause damage to wires when you and the bike change trajectories. So I was looking for something that's going to break away better. And I ended up custom fabricating sort of a wire harness based off of that. So... Uh, let's talk about cost just for a second. So this radio is about a $30 unit, $25 or $30. Uh, the battery with the USB charger uh, was about $20. Uh, this radio seems to only come with a way to direct charge it 
if you get this extended battery, uh, but the extended battery by itself, even if you're not charging it or if something happens to your charging system, you at least get uh, a, another, you get two days out of it according to the, the literature as compared to one with the normal battery. And then this uh, regular uh, Kenwood two-prong plug feeds your your push to talk signal and your your voice and your your sound back signal uh, into your helmet uh, so what I wanted to cobble into this system was a breakaway push to talk and charging capability and that's what I did here so you can kind of see my work starts at the yellow uh, shrink wrap wire loom here and this is where I've started to make my modifications. So I wired in this pre-coiled uh, USB-C connection as the breakaway. And at the end of one of these coils, I zip-tied uh, a metal loop here. The intent being that, you know, I've got a, a hydration pack that I usually wear dual sporting. And it's got a chest buckle that I can, that, that fits through this ring so that I can buckle that together. And then when... Uh, when I unexpectedly leave the bike, you know, that allows, uh, beyond just the amount of pulling that this, this system allows, um, if you get too far from the bike, all of a sudden, it will just break away. Uh, and it does so pretty well, I think. Um, I'm, I'm kind of worried about that USB-C connection, you know, either getting filled with dirt or uh, the, the connections fretting inside, uh, things like, things of that nature. Um, causing failures, but as of right now, it seems like it works pretty okay. Um, I've had these regular USB charging ports on my dash for a couple of years now, never had a problem with them, so I kind of don't expect to have a big problem with that either. But uh, like I was saying, handlebar mounted push to talk, that's my horn button here. That's what I'm using for push to talk. And then uh, I've got this USB charger, like I mentioned, both of those are wired into the USB-C, so there's a little bit of soldering and cobbling there. But so far, it seems to work. I haven't really put any miles on it yet, uh, but just riding around the property a little bit, it seems like everything works okay. Uh, I've pulled this apart a good number of times now, and it hasn't caused any damage. doesn't seem like it will. Um, so acts like a pretty decent breakaway. Uh, my only complaint so far is that, uh, you know, this you are looking at like an $80 or $90 setup, so it's not going to have great reliability, but I'm kind of disappointed that even out of the box, uh, these connections on these Baofeng radios are not great. Um, I have checked with a different radio and with a headset. Uh, this headset before I started working on it and another he headset that I have that I haven't molested on. And both of them have this behavior where you can, you can push on this or pull on this, uh, either of these connections and they will come, they'll come disconnected. Uh, you won't really know it. Uh, you'll just be trying to talk or listen. You won't hear or say anything. The push, the remote push talk button won't work because it's not connected in the radio. Uh, but it seems to be that's where the problem is. And I'm kind of disappointed that that's a new out of the box problem, but I'm gonna be researching if there's any way to, to open this radio up and make that more robust. Uh, if anybody knows anything that sees this before I get that far, uh, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, I, I think I would recommend a system like this. Uh, I think this is what at least me and my wife are going to be headed toward. Um, maybe even the guys that that I ride with uh, will be headed toward using something that operates in the, in the uh, GMRS limitations and rules, uh, which is going to be, which is going to offer, I think, a lot better communication than those cardo units and then any uh, Cena Bluetooth unit things that exist on the market um, and still do so in a more cost effective way than the Cena combination that allows you to operate on GMRS frequencies. Uh, so I hope somebody finds this helpful and uh, let me know if you've tried something like this, if you have any experience with this. And I look forward to. Uh, Look forward to trying this out on the trail and maybe letting everybody know how it does after a couple of good uh, week-long rides or so.